All right, we're gonna go step by step of all the functions of our Shock Boss Override Dual Fill Kit. Open the case, and right off the bat, you have your two hoses attached with a Velcro. Undo the Velcro. I just put my finger in there so it's not super tight. Makes it faster. Just like that. All right, then we take this top layer of foam off, set that aside, and we're presenting with our equipment. I'm gonna take my tool out, hook up my hoses. Real simple. Okay, I'm gonna take my bottle out. I put it in my shoulder strap. I like to do this because it prevents rolling, protects it in, in case of a drop, and I'm gonna to need to be hands-free anyway. So it's nice to do it right off the bat. Next, I wanna take out my power wrench, and then the top layer of foam comes out with the other components in it, and that gives me access to my power filler. Let's head over to the mother bottle, and we'll show you how to hook this up. First, we're gonna connect this to the nitrogen bottle. Of course, it's closed. And just get it hand tight. And now when we tighten this, we only need about 10, 15 pounds of, of torque. So, two finger tight. Up more, just like that. Perfect. That's it. Now, this screw on top, that's our vent knob. We wanna make sure that this is closed while we're filming, filling. But, so we're just kinda of tighten that. And now we're ready to hook up. So on our N2 bottle, on our fill bottle, we have a little port on the side here. This is a check valve, and this connects. All right, so uh, before I do anything, I always wanna double check all my connections. Uh, mother bottle's closed. Vent knob is closed, and I'm just gonna triple check that with my wrench. Yep, it's nice and snug. And then you want to kind of jiggle on this, make sure this doesn't come loose. All right, now we're ready to fill. Very simple, we're just going to open the nitrogen valve. You'll hear a click, that's the check valve opening, and you can hear the nitrogen flowing. And you just want to let it go slow, it's actually a small orifice, so you can't fill it fast. You just want to watch this gauge, and that's going to show your bottle pressure. Um, and this will just equalize whatever's in the nitrogen bottle will fill into here, and by the end of this, both will have the same pressure. All right, so it's been about 10 seconds since I heard, uh, since I heard anything. I'm going to shut my mother bottle off, make sure that's tight. And now... That's closed, but I still have high pressure in my line. So what I want to do is vent this quickly through here, and that will close the check valve on my bottle. You, of course, want to make sure nothing's in the way of this vent. All right. So once that's vented, I can disconnect this at zero PSI and place the cap back on. All right, now I'm ready to go charge some ORIs. All right, we're going to put everything we don't need away. <laughs> we're going to put everything we don't need away and grab our extreme pressure hose assembly. Stop foam goes back in. <laughs> All right, so while I'm kind of getting situated, I just took my hose and I kind of coiled it up and stuck it through um, so that way it's out of my way. All right, and now I'm going to take my shock fill tool and remove the chucks from both ends. And what I'm going to do is connect these to my shredder valves first and then connect those to them. So one thing you want to be wary of is you want to make sure that the pin is up like this. If it's like this, you want to unscrew it so that way when you connect to your shredder valve, you won't automatically just start losing nitrogen. All right, so on these O-Rise, we have the reservoir for the upper chamber. And you'll notice that this is our long nose chuck because of this knob. We actually need this for this exact ORI. So we're gonna screw that down all the way. And then we're gonna kind of just keep it about an eighth of a turn. Just make sure it's tight.
Once my chucks are on the Schrader valves, now I can check my hoses. All right, everything's hooked up. I'm gonna make sure that this needle valve is closed. Uh, and then that's just clockwise like this. And I'm gonna go back to the chucks and depress the red pin and just screw this in. All right, so we're all hooked up now. Um, I have both of these valves open, which means my sides are connected, but it's pretty much locked in. What I'm gonna do is just for the, this video, we're gonna air these uh, upper chambers down to zero. That's gonna drop the Jeep, and then we're gonna go back up and show you how to do that. So I'm gonna release it from here, which means I don't wanna plug anything in here. I wanna release it very slowly. If I go too fast, I might get oil through my, uh, through my tool. And there's that oil. All right, we're at zero PSI. The Jeep is just about fully bottomed out. Um, you can see on the ORI, there's, you can maybe see three quarters of an inch of shaft showing, which is the internal bump stop. All right, so from here, once your upper chambers are fully aired out at zero PSI, if you need to make adjustments to your lower chamber, you can using the same method. Disconnect the chucks, connect them to the lower chambers, and make your adjustments. We're gonna skip that step uh, because the process is pretty much the same as the uppers. Now we're just going to recharge uh, these O-Rise and get this Jeep to ride height. So if I didn't mention it before, uh, you want to make sure that your vehicle is on level ground before you start charging the upper chamber. Um, where this Jeep is perfect, we're going to start going up. So I'm going to take this here and connect it to the bottom of my shock inflator. I'm going to make sure that my needle valve fell is closed like that. And then I'm going to open my nitrogen bottle. All right. So from here, um, both sides are open, which means they're going to uh, charge equally. And I'm just going to start going up. And on this rig, we want about four inches of shaft showing. That's going to be about 300 to 450 PSI, somewhere around that. All right, so we're just about at ride height uh, on the higher strut, but the Jeep's not sitting level, so we want to raise the passenger side. Passenger side is a little heavier, has a gas tank, um, so we're going to shut this side off, right? And now when we open this needle fill valve again, we're only sending pressure to this side. We can go a little higher. You notice that the needle kind of goes up and then it falls back down when it stops. And that's just the difference between your flow pressure and your static pressure. All right, so we're pretty happy with this. I'm gonna shut these valves off and then I'm going to close this. We're, we're pretty happy with the right height. Um, I took the bottle off, set the tool down. All these valves are closed, but now we need to disconnect the Schrader valves. And I'll show you how to do that. But we always want to start with this red knob. We're just going to unscrew it. And this closes the Schrader. That means that um, from here on out, whatever we do, this is shut, closed. We're not losing any pressure in here. So we're just going to crack this. And this is just whatever N2 is in our line. And then we can unscrew it. And put the cap back on.
We're just about done. We just need to purge any remaining pressure on here so we can disconnect safely. Um, I have one valve still open. My red um, is closed and then this bottle is closed. And I'll just double check. Yeah, I can go a little more. Okay. So now all I have to do is just purge from here. Goes to zero. And now I can disconnect everything super easy. Everything goes back in the kit and you're all set.